Kayla. I'm Jason. And today we're talking about poltergeist. Poltergeist is uh, about a family in Southern California, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, their house is haunted, it abducts their daughter, and madness ensues. Today I drew like. And I got dislike. So Good luck with that one. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is kind of a bitch position to be put in. It'll, it'll just show you how smart Jason is. Don't patronize me. Why do you like poltergeists, Kayla? You know what? It starts GG National Anthem. Anything that starts with the Star Spangled Banner must be good. Like you are just filled with like this sense of pride of nation and everything, and you're like, pride of I'm nation. Gonna watch, I'm gonna watch this movie. It's gonna be meaningful. <laughs> the, that's your leading point? The argument is the national anthem? There's something about that song that has a very powerful emotional and just kind of familiar feeling. You're done? <laughs> I'm sorry. So, so basically you've got Poltergeist, a movie of patriots. That's not what I'm saying at That's all. I'm what saying, you're saying what this movie does is it takes the day to day and makes it important. Like she, the mother's just making breakfast for her kids, and it seems so significant. Like these day to day things, and that's one thing I really love about Spielberg um, because he does do that really well. He does. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but do you know who directed Poltergeist? Uh, it's. It says Toby Hooper. It says Toby Hooper, <laughs> but this is not a Toby Hooper movie. I have seen all of Toby Hooper's movies, I think. A lot of them pretty bad, some of them of course sublime, but uh, you watch this, this is through and through. This is a, a well-documented controversy dating back to the production of the film. Who actually directed Poltergeist? There were rumors that uh, Toby Hooper wasn't capable for various reasons of uh, completing the shoot, so Executive producer Steven Spielberg stepped in, and if you watch it, it's a Spielberg horror movie. Now let that sink in for a minute. The guy that made E.T. and Hook and Amistad making a horror movie. Because it's not Toby Hooper. It's not the guy that did Funhouse, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Life Force. It is definitely, unmistakably, Steven Spielberg making a horror movie. And... It's one of those th things where you're like, you're so surprised. Once you see it, you're like, wow, this doesn't really feel like a Adobe Hoover um, movie. And you're just so drawn into this family dynamic. And I find it very, very sweet. I feel like I could be a part of their family, maybe a daughter or somebody watching as everything's going down. And Who would want to? These are the worst parents. They're sitting around getting stoned while there's a malevolent entity preying on their children. And what do they do? They don't move. They don't pack up and leave. They call in the little goblin woman, Tangina, to take care of things. Which one are you going to do when some phantom force is sliding your seven-year-old across the kitchen floor? Get the hell out of Dodge? Or call the old goblin lady with the high-pitched voice? Are you talking in my reality? <laughs> I guess we are. I'm just saying, this, this is a thing where Child Protective Services would step in. Poltergeist. It does this amazing thing where it always brings you back into reality. And it's so scary. So, so scary. The buildup is amazing. And then at the height of tension, it will make you laugh. Like, just kind of, that's how I would react, you know? And be like... Oh, things are really bad. Guess I have to crack a joke. And it's it's just so real that it makes me even more scared about the things that they're about to go through. I just think that it's, it is quintessential uh, 80s Spielberg, which isn't bad, but it doesn't belong in a horror movie. It's all sparkly with the John Williams swell of music and, oh, it's suburban life. And yeah, it, it's and, and the precocious kids and the, the absent father, that is early Spielberg. And it's it's just so much of that. It's, it's almost just like saccharine. It's almost like someone took a good haunting movie and poured caro syrup all over it. 
with amazing monster effects. They're kind of feeble puppets, really. Feeble puppets? Yeah. The beast, that thing, it was obviously some sort of Henson creation. What are you talking about? Like, my dream door is the door that their closet with the little tentacles coming out. That's my dream door. The, the sphincter? <laughs> That's what you want is your door? Yes. Okay. Like, so what's your next point? My next point is... Aside from sphincter door. <laughs> my next point is... That how many horror movies are actually haunted? Okay. Point the first, no such thing as hauntings. Point the second, there's no such thing as hauntings. What are you talking about? This is a movie. You're saying it was haunted. It's a haunted movie like it's The Ring video or something. And everyone involved in it, oh, sorry, you haven't seen The Ring. That's okay. But no, there's, yeah, bad things happened. And people died in a movie that was filmed 25 years ago because it was 25 years ago. And people die. It's a fact of life. It's really haunted. It's Don't listen haunted. to Jason. It's like. Uh, uh, as a child of the 80s, shut your mouth. As a child of the 80s, I want to bring up that Poltergeist spawned that damn catchphrase that I had to grow up listening to for 10 freaking years. They're here. You couldn't go a day without hearing someone say that. A friend, a relative, someone par parodying it in some stupid sitcom or in a commercial. And it was just obnoxious. And I'm glad it's over. Though, that's another really nice thing about this movie is it's almost like Spielberg knew what the catchphrase was going to be. And that people were being like, this girl, she gets, you know, taken in by the television and she's stuck and that's the only way they communicate to her. He puts that right out there, like within the first five minutes of the movie. And you're like... Yep. Oh, I, I thought I knew everything about it. I thought I knew the catchphrase. I thought I knew everything. And then it just sucks you in deeper and deeper. The fact that everyone knows that catchphrase, that's not filmmaking. That is marketing. Post your comments on uh, YouTube. Let us know what you think.